welcome to the Tuesday edition of the DC Today. We uh, are all looking forward to the CPI number tomorrow, Wednesday morning before market opens. In the meantime today, the Dow is down a little bit. It was kind of up and then flat and then up again in the last 20 minutes went down, but it was down 0.17% uh, on the day, 50 plus uh, points. The S&P was down a little bit more, half a percentage point, and the Nasdaq was down about 0.63%. Uh, uh, technology uh, was the second worst performing sector of the day. It was down 85 basis points. Materials were the worst, down 93. Uh, the best was industrials, but only up 17 basis points. So you had a few sectors that were up, but barely, and then um, a little bit more pulling down. The bond market was totally flat on the day. The 10-year didn't move at all. The uh, yield closed at 3.52%. Oil was up a little bit more again, uh, about 50 cents a barrel, closing at 73 and a half. Um, that's about it uh, for markets. From an economic standpoint, last night I did read the report on China reporting their quarterly export growth was up 8.5% year over year. It had been expected to be up 7 percent plus change. So you had better than expected growth on China's exports. Starting to see a little bit of evidence of the China reopening coming to fruition in terms of a little bit better economic data and activity. It's been slow going out of Q1, but um, a little pickup there on exports. NF NFIB, which measure, measures the small business uh, optimism, that index did report its lowest level in over 10 years since 2013. And it wasn't down much from last month, so it's just been sort of a slow drip down for a little while. But each category was lower, but barely. You know, new, you had just kind of expectations, sales, CapEx plans, hiring plans, blah, 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 all muted. And again, I would argue a lot of that is very likely connected to uh, access to credit and, and cost of credit, um, just sort of weighing on some of the expectations for small businesses. Um, so I mentioned CPI coming tomorrow. The, um, a couple of other quick things I do want to go over. The earnings season is almost done. We still have a couple companies reporting, but with the majority of earnings season behind us, um, it's kind of interesting to see where things stand that on the year you have the S&P 93.5% of its market cap increase. So aggregate, the total S&P, 93.5% of that increase in market cap has come from 20 companies. 6.5% of it has come from 480 companies, okay? Now, the way I just said it is exactly accurate. There's nothing funky or, or, or gamey about the way I'm sharing it. But, of course, one of the factors would be that if there are 250 companies that are down on the year, then they're going to be pulling it down quite a bit. But I didn't say the top 20 performing and the bottom 480 performing. I said by market cap. And so the fact of the matter is that when 94% of movement is coming from 20 companies, you do clearly have a lot of companies in the bottom 480 not up on the year and in fact probably down. And then of those top 20, you surely have the majority of them up. So you just have a very top-heavy market. It's not the greatest sign of sustainability in terms of market momentum. Um, somebody asked me a question and asked David today that you'll see in the dctoday.com about these banks that are supposedly, that got themselves in trouble by taking so much deposit money from one particular sector or geography had risky levels of depositors that made them more vulnerable to a bank run, to deposit withdrawals that ultimately ended up hurting some of these high profile banks that have gone down this year. And they said, what are they supposed to do? You know, are you supposed to just turn down money that comes in? I think it's a fair question. I just want to point out this money didn't just show up. Okay, this was money that was, um, sought after. They were marketing to a particular niche and doing so quite aggressively. So I would argue that you don't really just incidentally end up with a high concentration of a sector or geography specific depositor and, and bring on all that additional vulnerability on accident. It, it does require some effort. 
particularly focusing on services and needs to a, a given uh, uh, type of depositor or sector or, or, or whatnot. But even apart from that, even if it was just an accident, you just lo and behold woke up with all these vulnerable deposits from one particular industry, I, I would still suggest it probably ought to weigh in to the way you manage your bond portfolio, to the type of capital you raise, particularly the equity you're going to have in your cap stack. And, um, you know, the general way you think about hedging, the way you think about interest rate risk, the way you prepare uh, for deposit withdrawals, that even apart from what did create a given deposit level, I would think one might want to have some sensitivity to what they can know about their depositors and their customers. So I thought it was a fair, a fair question, and hopefully my answer is helpful. Uh, $1.1 trillion, speaking of banks, $1.1 trillion has left bank deposits since the Fed began raising rates. $750 billion of that has gone into money market mutual funds out of the banking system. Okay, CPI tomorrow, bright and early. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and thank you for reading the DC Today. We'll see you tomorrow.